Hey friends, Michael Warren here from Essential Guitar Lessons and let's learn 10 easy two chord guitar songs and how to practice them. This time you'll learn how to play three chords, the best way to finger each chord, tips to make them cleaner and easier to play, the best ways to practice them and how to change between them and then we'll do 10 songs to practice the chord changes there and I'll also show you a strumming pattern. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a way to speed up your chord changes by pushing the chord, so stick around for them. Don't forget, if you enjoy this lesson, to subscribe and hit the notification bell for songs and lessons weekly. Or if you're having any problems, let me know. So let's make a start. So we'll start with the E minor chord, which is the easiest chord to start with. We'll make the shape, and then I'll show you ways to fix any problems you're having. So with our E minor, we're going to have an open E string, so no fingers on that one top string. Take your second finger, place that on the second fret on the A string, so second from the top. Now we can't put that right at the front of the fret like we normally do because we've got to put our other finger underneath it. So we just go to about the middle of the fret there with our second finger. Then take your third finger, second fret again, but this time on the D string. So they're both on the second fret, but one's on the A string, one's on the D string. Then we have an open G string, an open B string, and an open E string. And we strum all the strings with our E minor. So that's our E minor chord. Remember, don't have your other fingers sticking out too far. Keep them close to the strings, or as close as you can there. So let's go through some tips to help with that. Now your wrist with open chords doesn't have to be down under the neck. We definitely need to do that when we're doing bar chords or power chords or scales, but with our open chord, it doesn't have to be right under the neck. We can come up and be touching the neck with the palm of our hand if we want to. So our wrist doesn't have to be right down here because I find beginners find that really difficult to do. Your thumb, that can come over the top and that's completely fine as long as it's not touching the top string. So we don't want to grab it, it can just be up the top there. Now we don't want it off to the side, so we don't want it coming like this because you lose all your push then. You can't sort of push on your chord if your thumb is off to the side here. So we want that fairly straight and it can come over the top of the neck there again just be careful not to touch that top string so we're not grabbing the neck our thumb is just placed there now the main problem i see when students play this open chord is they're not on the tips of their fingers and they're muting the g string so our string <laughs> under where our finger is from the d string so to fix that we want to be right on the tips of our fingers so we're moving our whole hand forward tips of fingers and we're not muting that G string. So to see if you're doing that, just play the strings individually and see if you're muting that G string there. So what we have to do for that is move our wrist forward. So we're coming this way. If that's the neck of the guitar and I move forward, my fingers will go onto the tips more. So I'm just moving forward from this position coming forward. And I don't have to move much to not block that E string. So I'm blocking the E string. Just move forward a little bit more on the tips of our fingers. And now I'm not muting it there. Another common problem is muting the bottom E string. So if we're grabbing it, we can mute the bottom E string with the palm of our hand. So just make sure you're not doing that. You can have the palm just off the neck of the guitar there so it's not touching and that should help with that there. So when we're strumming a chord we don't want to be muting any strings so like I said we can all just play the individual strings and see what you're muting. Now you may do that at first and it does take a little bit of getting used to but when you're playing it try not to mute the strings make sure to be on the tips of your fingers your wrist up there. Now, if it's buzzing, there's normally two reasons for this. One is you're not pushing hard enough on the frets. So we might be getting a... So it just means I have to push a little bit harder and I'll get the note clean then. The other one is I'm back too far on my fret. So if I'm back here, it's going to buzz, so I need to move forward a little bit there. Now when you first start, you'll probably be pushing too hard and you'll feel like you're pushing your fingers through the back of the neck to get the sound. 
But over time, you'll learn how hard you have to push for your guitar, because every guitar is a little bit different. So that's our E minor chord. Second finger, second fret on the A string. Third finger, second fret on the D string. Open E, open G, open B, open E, and try not to mute any of the strings there. So that's E minor. We write it as a capital E with a lowercase m, and that stands for minor, so E minor. Now when you're getting that chord, make sure you do it the same way every single time. This is the most important step with chords. This builds muscle memory. So if I'm putting my second finger down first, then my third finger, I do it that way every single time. Now you can do it the other way. You can put your third finger down first and then your second finger, and that's fine. You can do it that way. Just make sure you do it that way every single time. That's the most important part of it. I keep changing the way I'm doing it. It takes a lot longer to build muscle memory there. And over time, your fingers will both go down at the same time. But at the moment, if you need to walk them, just make sure you're doing it the same way every single time. Now, the best way to practice that is to get the shape. So we go on our E minor, we do four strums. Try not to mute the string, stop it. Take your hand off. Get off the shape, so don't leave your hand just above the strings. Take your hand off, drop it right down. Make the shape again, make sure you're doing it the same way every single time, and then another four strums there. And do that a few times, and that's the best way to get that chord there, or to practice the chord without any songs. And like I said, the main thing is to make sure you're doing it the same way every time. Wrist doesn't have to be down, thumb can be over the neck. Try not to be muting strings right on the tips of our fingers if you are, and try not to mute the bottom E string V. Now also, if it's buzzing, remember you have to push down a little bit harder or you might have to move closer to the front of the fret. You can see my third finger there is nearly on the fret bar, so as close as possible, then my second finger is just above it. So that's about in the middle of the fret. Just make sure you're not right back there. Depending on the size of your fingers, it can be easier for some than it is for others. So now let's try the E chord. Now this is really easy once you can do the E minor chord. So we go to our E minor. All you have to do is place your first finger on the G string on the first fret and that gives us our E chord. So you can hear the difference. E minor always sounds sadder. E is happier. So let's go through that. We have an open E string. Second finger, second fret on the A string. Third finger, second fret on the D string. Now our first finger on the first fret on the G string, an open B string and an open E string. So we strum all the strings again. Now all our tips stay exactly the same. Our wrist is up, it doesn't have to be down. Our thumb is up, not off to the side. We're not muting any strings, so we're right on the tips of our fingers. If you need to, just move your hand forward and that'll get you more on the tips of your fingers. And we're pushing hard enough so it doesn't buzz and we're not right at the back of the fret there. Now again, the most important thing with this is putting it on the same way every time. Now I would suggest the way you did your E minor, do that and then just add your first finger on. That way you've already practiced the E minor, putting your second finger, third finger, then your first finger on. Again, it doesn't matter too much. You might go your first finger, second finger or third finger. However you do it, make sure you do it the same way every single time. And we practice this exactly the same as we did with our E minor. Hop on your E, strum it four times. Take it off, let your hand come off, put it on exactly the same way again, four times, come off, put it back on again, four times there. Now you can also go from E minor to E now, we've got our E minor, so we've just got our two fingers there, four strums, and then I just have to place my first finger on and I've got my E. E minor, first finger off, E. Now when you're doing that, try not to have your first finger right out here. It makes it harder to get to the E. You've got to go further. So I just take it off and just hover above the G string there. So E minor. And E. 
So now we have E minor and E. Let's do one more chord. That way we can play a few songs. If I've just got E minor and E, there aren't really any songs I can play. We need at least two chords. I threw the E minor in there because it's really easy to do and it makes it nice and easy to get to your E once you've done your E minor. So now let's learn how to play the A chord as well. So with our A chord, there's three different ways to play it. I'll show you what works for me. We're playing the same notes with each way, but we're just doing different fingering there. So I'll show you what works for me, and I use this way because it makes it a nice easy change from the E, which we'll be doing with our songs. So our A chord, we're gonna have our second finger on the D string, so three down from the top on the second fret. Then we're gonna place our third finger on the second fret as well on the G string, so one below, and then our little finger on the B string on the second fret, one below that. So again, we can't be right to the front of the fret there because we've got the other fingers in the way. So make sure your little fingers as close to the front as possible and just put the others behind it. Now we have an open A string with this one. We don't play the top E string and we have an open E string at the bottom. So again, our wrist doesn't have to be down. Our thumb can be over the top, but not off to the side. Make sure you're pushing hard enough. Now that could be a harder one. We might get a bit of fret buzz there because our little finger's normally weaker than our other fingers. So we're strumming. So let's go over that again. We have the open A string, second fret on the D string, second fret on the G string, second fret on the B string, and an open E string at the bottom there. Four strums. Take it off. Put that on again and make sure you do it the same way every single time. That's the most important step. Four strums, come off, four strums again. Again, make sure you're right on the tips of your fingers. If I'm coming back a little bit, I'll be muting the bottom E string there. So as I move more on the tips of my fingers, I'm not muting the strings anymore. So there's our first three chords, E minor, E and A. Remember, always be on the tips of your fingers with that thumb up, wrist up, try and push hard so we're not getting string bars and stay as close to the front of the fret as possible. And the biggest thing we want to remember is putting it on the same way every single time to build that muscle memory there. And it doesn't matter too much how you do it, just do it the same way every single time. And then we've got our practice, put your cord on, strum four times, take it off, put it back on again. And that's a way to get quicker with the chords. So for our songs, we'll be using the E and the A chord. So I'll show you the easiest way to change between the two chords. So we're gonna start on our E chord. So we have open E string, second fret on the A and the D, first fret on the G, open B, open E, and we strum that four times. Now to get to the A chord, it's quite easy. I just take my first finger off, put my second and third finger down a string, and add my little finger onto the B string. Now I'm on my A chord. So back to the E again. Take my first finger off, put my second and third finger down a string, and add my little finger onto the B string there, and we're on A. Now to get from A to E, all I have to do is take my little finger off, move my second and third finger up a string, and add my first finger on, and I'm back to E again. So changing between E and A isn't too hard. So the best way to practice that, do four strums, one, First finger off, fingers down, little finger on, four. Little finger off, second and third finger up, first finger on, back to E. And as we said, over time that'll get quicker and quicker the more you do that. And that's the best way to change from your E to your A chord and A to your E when you're starting out. If you're just starting, I would suggest doing a strum on each beat instead of trying to do a strumming pattern there. So if we have four beats in our bar, we're just strumming on one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, four. 
That way you're concentrating just on your left hand and the changes, and you're not worrying about what your right hand is doing. When you feel a little bit more confident with that, you can add a strumming pattern. So the easiest one to do, and the one we can use with most of our songs, is down, down, up, up, down, up. So before you try it, just say it out loud. I find if you can say it, you can normally play it. So down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now when you do an up stroke, you don't have to hit all the strings. We don't. You can just hit the bottom three or four strings. We don't have to be precise there. Just make sure we're not playing all of them. So let's try that. Hop on your E chord, and it'll be down, down, up. Again, down, down, up, up, down, up, and a little bit slower. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, and up to speed. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. So the counts for that is one on the first down, two on the second down. The up is on two and. The next up is on three and, the down is on four, and the last up is on four and. So it ends up being one and two and three and four and, one and two and three and four and. So you can see that first up comes in a little bit quicker. So down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. So that pattern there is a count of four. So one, two, three, four. Because we're counting one and two and three and four and. So it's one bar. Now if I'm writing that down, I write the chord which is one and then I put three strokes after it. So I'd have the E chord and then three strokes. And that means we're doing a count of four. Out, down, down, up, up, down. So now you know all that, let's try some songs to practice the chord changes. So the first song we'll do is For What It's Worth by Buffalo Springfield. Just goes E for a bar, A for a bar, E for a bar, A for a bar, and we do that three times, and that's our first verse there. So when you first start, if you're new to the chords, just use the down strums. So we're starting on our E, four strums. One, two, three, to our A, four strums. So that's really easy, just E and A for a bar. Remember your changes when I'm going from E, just first finger off, fingers down, little finger on to A. And if you need to put a gap in between the strums, that's all right at first. We've one, two, three, four. First finger off, fingers down, little finger on. One, two, three, four. Back to the E, little finger off. Second and third finger up, first finger on. So don't expect to get that really fast when you first try. Now let's also try it with the strumming pattern. So and that's our first song, nice and easy. Now these are all going to sound pretty similar because we're just using the E and the A chord. But if you want to, play along with the song as well. So they sound a little bit different there. Remember, when you're doing your changes, change it the same way every single time. So now let's try Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus. Again, we're just using the E and the A. We have the intro and we're going to play the A for four bars. And then when the singing starts, we do the A for three bars. Then we go to the E for four bars and then back to the A for a bar. And we just keep repeating that, does it the whole song. So again, you can just do it with your down strums. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. This is our intro. Three, one, two, our verse. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and E. So 
see that last day I play it for one bar, and then because I'm going back to start, I'm doing another three. So I'm doing that A for four bars, then the E for four bars, and it just keeps repeating that throughout the song. So let's try that with the strumming pattern as well. Our intro, just the A. song. Again, if you're new to chords, just do it with one strum on each. It's a little bit quicker than our first one this time. And again, it doesn't matter if we have the gaps between our chords. Make sure all our tips are there. We're on the tips of our fingers. Our wrist is up. Our thumb is straight. And we're pushing fairly hard. But that's the whole song. We've just got the intro, the A for four bars, and then we're just going between A and E. First A, we do three bars. Four bars on the E, and then we just keep doing four bars A, four bars E throughout the whole song. So that's a nice, easy one. Again, play along if you need to. Use your strumming pattern, or just use your down strums, and make sure you're doing your changes the same way every time. So let's try You Never Can Tell by Chuck Berry. This time we're going to use a caper, and we're going to place that on the third fret there. Now we want it as straight as possible, and fairly close to the fret when we're using a capo. If you don't have one, that's fine. You can just play the A and the E chord exactly the same. If you do have one, when we put our capo on, it's just like moving the nut of the guitar all the way up. I play my chords exactly the same way there. It's like saying now the third fret's the open, so my second fret would now actually be the fifth fret. So my E is the same shape, my A is exactly the same shape whenever I'm using a capo. So this time we're going to start on the A and we're going to do six bars of A. Then we go to our E, we're going to do eight bars. Then back to A for another two bars there and then we repeat that over and over again. So it's similar to Achy Breaky Heart. Once I've done it once through, I'm actually playing A for eight bars and E for eight bars. And that's the whole song that just keeps repeating that over and over again. So starting on our A and our normal strumming pattern again. So. song we're just going between the A and the E. Again all our tips apply but now we're using a capo so that could be a little bit harder because the frets are now a little bit closer together so it can be a little bit harder to get your fingers in there. Again if you don't have a capo that's completely fine you can play your A and your E the way you normally played it. So again these are just practicing changing between our A and our E chord there. You can do it all with down strums again that's a little bit quicker there. So one, two, When you feel a little bit more confident, try playing along with the song. Now, if you're using a capo, you'll be in a different key to them. If you've got the capo, it'll sound the same as the song using the A and the E. So that's You Never Can Tell by Chuck Berry. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's on Pulp Fiction there. So let's try another one. So let's try Love Me Do by The Beatles. Again, we're going to have our capo on the third fret. And as I said, if you don't have a capo, that's fine. Just do it with our normal E and A chords. Now this time we're going to have E for a bar, A for a bar, E for a bar, A for a bar, and we do that three times, and that's our verse, and then we go back to E for a bar, and then A we're going to do for four bars, but on the last bar we're just going to play it once, and let it ring 
or hold it for the full bar there. So we're just going one, two, three, four. Now you can stop it with your hand if you want, or if you're new, just let it bring out two, three, four. And that's our verse. Then our chorus is just gonna go E for bar, A for bar, E for bar, A for bar, we'll do that two times. And then we do the E for bar, and again, A for four bars with the last one with a stop. So let's try that now, starting on our E. one we're counting the first drum as one and then holding two three four so one two three four and then we're straight back to our E there again that's going fairly quick so if you need to just use your dance drums and go slow if you have to one, two, three, four. do you change the same way every time back to E That one again is fairly quick. We've got now with those songs, the strumming patterns are a little bit different, but we don't want to have to worry about what our right hand is doing. So we're just trying to keep that as simple as possible so we can concentrate on our changes. Once you can do the changes fairly easily, you can go back and learn the strumming patterns as well. They're normally not that hard once you've got the changes down. So our next song we'll try is three is a magic number by Embrace. This one's a little bit harder because we're just doing a two count on each chord. So we're starting on our E, we're playing two strums. So we're gonna do all down strums for this one. So one, two, then to our A for two down strums, three, four. So when we count, we don't wanna count one, two, one, two, one, two. We just count one, two, three, four. So E, one, two, A, three, four, back to E. A, three, four. And that's nearly the whole song. There is some slight changes at the end. So let's try that now. getting harder now because we have to change really fast. If you have to go slow, that's fine. The gap in there gives you A, back to your E. So that one's getting a little bit harder with quicker changes. So now let's do Silence is Easy by Star Sailor. This time we're going to do this a little bit different. We're going to do all down strums, but we're going to do them on a count of one and two and three and four and. So that way I'm playing eight strums to one bar. So I'm counting one and two and three and four and what we call eighth notes there. And again, we're just doing two bars on the E, two bars on the A, two bars on the E, two bars on the A, and that's the whole song that just keeps doing that right the way through. When we're doing a down strum, we don't have to hit all the strings. It can be a little hard when you first start. You can just hit either the bottom four or five strings or the top four or five. It doesn't matter too much there. And we're doing two bars on each. So we're starting on our E and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Then we're going to our A and we're doing exactly the same thing. One and two and three and four and
go a lot slower just to start to build that up. to put the gap in. Now I should say don't worry too much if you've got a gap in between the chords. We all start out that way. It's very rare you'll see someone start their chords and not put a gap in between and it happens to everyone. But I'll show you a way to help that at the end of the video as well. So let's try another one. So now let's try You and I by Ed Sheeran. This will just be the first verse because he changes after that. And this time we're going to have our capo on the second fret. Again, if you don't have the capo, just play it with our normal E and A chord. Second fret now, the E and the A shape stay exactly the same, but we're now playing it on the fourth and third fret and the A all on the fourth fret there. So we're going to have two bars of E, a bar of A, three bars of E, a bar of A, and a bar of E there. We're just going to do this all with down strum. So starting with our E, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, A, two, three, E, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, and now A, one, two, E, one, two, three, four. So that's just a short one, but now we're using two bars, one bar, three bars, one bar, so we have to think a little bit more there. Always when you're reading chord charts and that, and chord progressions, try and look at the chord ahead before you get to it. We don't want to be playing our E, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then look, oh, okay, I've got to play A now. While you're playing the E, I know I have to play A next, back to E. So I'm always ahead, I'm always reading ahead when I'm doing chords there. So again, not too hard, just all down strums now. Make sure all your tips are the same, even though you've got your capo on, tips of fingers, wrist up, thumb straight there, and pushing hard enough. Again, that's gonna be a little bit harder because the frets are a little bit smaller now with our capo on the second fret. So now let's try Paperback Rider by the Beatles. This time our capo is gonna be on the third fret, so we can just move that up there. Now again, this one's a little bit quicker. We're gonna have the intro is just gonna be on the E, we're going to use our strumming pattern. We do that for four bars. Three and four. So that's just the intro. Then when we go to the verse, we're going to do the E for eight bars, then the A for two bars, and then we go back to the E, and we're going to play it two times, and then hold it for two bars. So our verse now, E for eight bars, one, So for the next part of the verse, it'll be exactly the same. We do the E for eight bars, the A for two, and then we go back to the E, we do our two down strums on that, but this time we hold it for six bars, and then we just go back into the intro, the verse, intro, and the verse, and that'll take us to the end of the song. So let me play that for you there, starting with our intro on the E, four bars. So again, something a little bit different, back to our capo on the third fret, but now we're doing two strums on the E, so just two down strums there, and holding it, instead of playing the whole way through, we're just doing one strum. So something a little bit different there. Again, these are all gonna sound pretty similar, but if you play along with the song, it'll start to sound like it, which is hard to do when you first start, because normally your chord changes will take a little bit of time, but once you start to get it, give it a go with the song. 
So let's try this as a C by the Water Boys. This one's going to be a little bit different. We'll be in 3 4 timings. This time there's three beats in a bar, so the accent's a little bit different now. When we're playing 3 4, the accent's on ones. That just means ones louder. One, two, three, one, two, three. So it sounds like a waltz almost. When we're in 4 4, the accent's on two and four. One, two, three, four. So although we're just one beat less in the bar, so three, four, it's actually a different feel. Now you don't have to worry too much about that. The strumming pattern we're going to use is down, down, up, down, up. So down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. So one bar is down, down, up, down, up. Down, down, up, down, up. And we just join that together. So we're going to do the E for four bars and then the A for four bars and that does that through the whole song. So slowly on the E. There. So let's play that up to speed now. So with that one, you can make the first drum a little bit louder, and that's our one there. So it'll give you sort of that waltz feel. So that's something a little bit different. That's This Is The Sun by The Water Boys. Check it out, it's a good song. So let's do one more. Let's do Love Comes To Town by U2 and BB King. Now this isn't exactly what they're playing and we'll just look at the verse, but it's pretty close. It's gonna sound like if you play along with them. This time it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna to stick to our strumming pattern, but we're gonna do a bar on E and then half a bar and then go to A for half a bar. So we're gonna have E. So we're going to change in the middle of our pattern. So we're going to have our normal pattern for the first bar. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Then the second bar, we're going to go down, down, up. Then when we go to the A, down, down, up. So we hit the second bar, down, down, up, down, down, up. So the pattern changes a little bit there. If that's a little bit too hard, you can just do it all with down strums. So we have E for a bar and a half, and then A, and then when you repeat that again, so the A is just half a bar, we do that two times. Let's play that. once and hold it for two bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's do that a little bit quicker now. That's a little bit more confusing. So let's run over that pattern again. So the first bar is the same as our normal strumming pattern. Down, down, up, up, down, up. The second bar, stay on the E. Down, down, up. And then the A, down, down, up. So let's do that up to speed. So that's a little bit harder now. We're now changing the strumming pattern in the middle of a bar on the start of the second bar there. So just take that slowly if you need to. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And you can have your gap in the chords. That's fine as well. You'll find once you start to get your chord changes quicker that that flows fairly easy with that pattern. So that's our 10 songs there. So now I'm gonna show you a way to make those chord changes a little bit quicker. We're gonna start what they call pushing the chords. So what you wanna do, and let's just take out for what it's worth. Now when you start doing this, do each chord for two bars and we'll just start with down strums. So what we're gonna do is start on our E. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. 
then I'm going to go to the A, but I'm not going to stop strumming. I'm just going to keep going with my strumming. I don't want any pause in there. Now, at first, you won't be on the chord. It'll take you a little bit to get the chord, but it forces you to go faster. And you'll find when you first start, you'll have a habit of stopping in between each chord because you get used to doing that change. So we won't have to break that habit. Now, again, it does take time and you just start slowly. Do each chord for two bars. That way, by the time you've got it, or if you need to do it three bars or four bars, it doesn't matter. We're just practicing that change without stopping our right hand. It's going to keep going the whole time. And that's the key to it. It starts to force you to go faster because you know your right hand's going to keep going. So I was on my E. I'm going to my A. Now it doesn't matter if I'm not quite on it. I keep going once I've got it. Then back to my E. And again, it doesn't matter if I'm not quite on it. Just keep strumming the whole time. To my A. And don't stop your right hand. Now you'll find that really tricky at first. Just keep it going. That way we're sort of forcing ourselves to change faster there. That's the best way to get the chord changes quicker. Just keep strumming. And you can do the same with the strumming pattern if you want. Just keep the pattern going and do the change while the pattern's still going. Now that's harder again. So I'm going to my A. It doesn't matter if I'm not quite on it yet. Keep going. Don't stop your right hand and then the E again. And over time, as we said, you'll start to put them all on in one go instead of walking. And what we're also doing, I'm changing in the air. So if I'm going from the E, I've actually made the A shape before I even put my fingers down. So I'm playing the E, A, and then when I'm going back to the E, I'm already made that shape, or I'm making the shape as I'm changing. I'm not stopping making the shape and then changing. Again, that'll all happen over time. Don't expect that to happen in the first couple of days. It does take a lot of practice to get these chords changed smoothly, but we all have to go through it, and it is a slow process for everybody. So now you know your E minor, your E, and your A chords. You know how to practice them just with four strums. Stop, take it off, put it back on again, four strums. Make sure you're doing it the same way every single time. That's the most important thing, because we're building that muscle memory there. I'm putting the same fingers down in the same order every single time I'm doing it. I've got my tips, my wrist can be up, my thumb, making sure I'm not muting the string, so getting right on the tips of my fingers, putting my hand forward, so towards the neck of the guitar, and it makes my fingers go more on the tips there, and try and push hard enough so we're not getting string buzz and not being at the back of the fret there. So that gives you 10 songs to practice and a couple of ways just to practice the chords before you get into the changes.